back today we are talking about a tool that I've had for a couple years now and have gotten quite a bit of use out of and especially since we have our new property which is in the middle of the woods and we have been cleaning up after our timber harvest that is the DeWalt 20 volt chainsaw with a 12 inch bar to start off uh, this is a small saw it's really light easily maneuverable and what I really like the most about it is it's just so easy to use having an electric chainsaw you're not dealing with mixing oil and gas you slap a battery in it, make sure there's oil for the bar and chain, and you are good to go. The only controls on it are the trigger and the kickback guard. Uh, kickback guard actually fooled me when I first got it. I thought the saw wasn't working because it's just an electronic switch in here. Uh, you just go ahead and pull it back for it to work, just like you do on a real gas chainsaw, and push it forward, and it just turns off the motor. You can still click the trigger, but nothing actually happens. That's why I thought it was uh, broken because typically you can't even pull the trigger on a gas saw when. The guard is forward. Another thing I really like is the chain tensioning mechanism. It is tool free, which I've never used a chainsaw where you didn't need a wrench of some sort to tighten or loosen the chain. All you do is unscrew this nut right here, pop this out, unscrew, and then this lever here tightens or loosens the chain on the bar. So it's really easy and I like how they designed that. Now let's talk about battery performance. My everyday just around the house battery is a five amp hour that I typically use in my larger DeWalt tools like circular saws and sawzalls, that sort of thing. And it does just fine. When I'm doing a lot of cutting, like when we're here in the middle of the woods and I've got essentially a full day's worth and I, I need it to last, I will put this big battery in. This is the 60 volt out of my string trimmer. Uh, but of course the 60 volt batteries work with the 20 volt tools. They just function as a nine amp hour instead of a three amp hour 60 volt. So this battery I found will actually give the motor a lot more power as well as a lot more lifespan. And some of you might be wondering whether or not this will work on these tiny little drill batteries. I have a one and a half amp hour that came out of my impact gun and the answer is yes, it will work and it will cut. Just don't expect it to cut all day for you. This is not a big battery. It's meant for something like a drill and this is a much larger motor than you'd find in an impact gun. Now let me talk a little bit about the bar and chain. Obviously it's a 12 inch bar. It's very good for small limbs. I don't know if I would cut a full 12 inch anything with it, but for things up to maybe eight inches, it's, it actually does quite well. And I will say uh, the chain does stay sharp for quite a bit. I just sharpened this recently. It takes a 530 seconds round file, by the way. And uh, the one complaint I have about the chain though is that it seems to be very kickback prone, which is kind of strange because I would think on a homeowner grade saw like this, they would want a full anti-kickback chain, but uh, it can be tough to start some cuts. It's always trying to kick back at you right as you're starting a cut. We might be able to get some of that on video, but uh, that's, the, that's the only complaint I have about the chain. Otherwise it stays pretty sharp and it leaves a fairly thin kerf too. So it's not removing a ton of material and the shavings look good. The last thing I want to mention about this saw, which is a con, is the oil leakage. If you leave oil in this saw after you're done cutting with it, it will leak out. <laughs> and it and it's, uh, basically coats the whole bottom of the saw and gets oiled on whatever you're sitting it on. So just keep that in mind. I tried cleaning it out to see if that made any sort of difference, but this thing just leaks oil and I don't know how to fix it. I should mention that I bought this saw more for carpentry than forestry working on barn beams and squaring things up. And this saw's small size and weight makes it really great for carpentry projects. So Alex is your tool guy. I am just an operator. Um, I don't know a ton about saws, but I do know that this one is super easy to operate. The trigger is super easy. Like Alex was talking about the guard, that is super um, easy to set up. And then also just the saw itself is so lightweight. And this is really beneficial for me because if you hand me a gas saw, I can't lift it up to high heights or um, I have to get in a really good position in order to cut. Um, but with something like this, I have a little bit more flexibility of 
how I can cut some type of limb. Um, Alex mentioned that we've been clearing up our property. We are building a house and so this has been what I've been using the entire time and he's been using his gas saw. And I can tell you that I really like this saw and I would highly recommend it to anyone who is looking for something that is lightweight and to use with smaller limbs. So when you're holding the saw, you hold the bar up here and then your thumb presses this lock here and this is to unlock it and then you pull this trigger here to start cutting. Now that we have told you what we like and don't like about the saw, we're going to go ahead and get cutting and show you some of that footage. Here's a seven inch diameter-ish hardwood log. I think it's an oak. Like butter. This is probably a seven inch diameter dead log that's been on the floor for a while. So it's probably pretty dried out and hard. The small plastic bucking spikes on the front of the saw do help a bit with levering the saw into your material. Came off the tracks. I don't know how. Luckily I don't need any tools to fix it. Good to go. One other thing I want to mention is if you push the saw too hard and you're really working it into the material, if this chain is skipping too much, it can actually like sense that and the motor will just kick off. You don't actually have to actuate the kickback card. The motor will just stop. You have to pull the saw out of the cut and restart. Like that. So I should take that back. There's two reasons the motor stops. What you just saw there was me pushing it too hard and it basically has a clutch so that you can't totally overload the motor while you're cutting. It will stop for a separate reason if the chain is kicking back too much and the motor can sense that, it will just cut off. It won't make any noise or anything like that like you just heard. So I would say overall we've had a positive experience with the saw. I would yeah. recommend it. I mean it's certainly no replacement for a large gas saw if you're you know, felling trees or bucking anything over 12 inches or so. But for what it is, it is an excellent small saw, really easy to use by anyone, easy to set up, no gas, oil mix, anything like that. Any yep. final words about it? I just love that it's super lightweight. So, yep, that's all I have to say, but I think it's a great option for a homeowner. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing to our channel as we build our dream home. So we're GCing our own build. If you want to follow along with that journey, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.